Okay, everyone. So, uh, continuing in Chapter 7, I'm going to talk about the ideal gas law. So, the ideal gas law um, is another gas law. So, before we talked about the, um, the combined gas law, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Okay, so this is really the, you only need to know two gas laws, the combined gas law, which I have up here, and the ideal gas law. The combined gas law with the ones and twos is what you're going to use for any problem where you have a situation with a gas, and you have one situation, and then you change some of the parameters, and then want to know about the new situation. The ideal gas law is simply this. We have an equation that directly relates pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. So I've brought moles into play here. And so where this comes from is P1 v, you know, P1 v1 over T1. It actually turns out that you could put an N1 down here, the number of moles. Um, Right? So what this means is this is all equal to PV over NT, right? PV over NT is all equal to K, some value of K. Well, there's no other variables. It actually turns out that for every gas, every gas, P times V over N times T is always the same number. It's always the same number as long as you have the same units. If pressure is in atmospheres and volume is in liters and N is moles and temperature is Kelvin, the value of K is always going to be for every gas ever, ever, ever. It's going to be 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres over mole Kelvin. That's what it's always going to be. So, what we did was we took this and called it R. We called it, we just called this constant R, and that's where the ideal gas law comes from. PV equals NRT. So, in, in practice, where I'm going to use this gas law is when I, not when I have some sets of gas parameters and then want to change it, you know, change and see how the pressure changes when I change volume, but when I have pressure, so I have four variables. Pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. When I have three of them and need to find the fourth, that is when I use the ideal gas law. When I have one, three of these four and I need the last one. So R is 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over mole times Kelvin. So, because of the nature of R, because R is a specific value, we're no longer doing a ratio, we're not comparing one pressure to another pressure and one volume to another volume like we were with the combined gas law. What we're doing now is we're actually calculating directly one of the values. And because R is our constant that relates it, we are confined, when we use the ideal gas law, to using certain values, or certain units. Now, you don't have to memorize R. R will always be given to you on an exam or quiz where you need it. Also, a li nice little hint, the units that you need to use in the ideal gas law are given in R, right? Liters, atmospheres, moles, kelvins. Those are the units you have to use. Pressure is in atmospheres, volume is in liters, moles, and kelvin temperature, right? So... This is how we use this. I'm going to um, actually go ahead and try using the gas law. Try to solve for this. See if you can put it together, and then I'll do practice on it. I mean, the ideal gas law is fairly straightforward. So, pause it. And okay. So, I want, I have, so again, PV equals NRT. I want to find what? The pressure. P equals NRT over V. From here, it's a matter simply of getting everything in the right units and plugging it in. So, all I need to do is take moles, which we already have moles, 3.9 moles of gas, times 
0.08206, actually, sorry, I keep using the four significant figure version. 821 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin times temperature. And the temperature, remember, has to be in Kelvin, so I'm going to take 32 plus 273. I'm going to get 305 Kelvin. Whoops. 305, I'm just going to write it again, 305 Kelvin, and that's, that goes here. Um, and volume is 7.85 liters. Now, the units are going to cancel. Liters cancels liters, moles cancels moles, Kelvin cancels Kelvins. And so all I do is take 4.39 times 0 0.0821 times 305 divided by 7.85. And I get P equals 14.0, if I'm rounding the three significant figures, what units should I have for pressure? Atmospheres is what's left, so atmospheres is what I have. Simple enough. Calculate the volume in liters occupied by 3.25 moles of chlorine gas at 1.54 atmospheres pressure and a temperature of 213 Celsius. So, go ahead and try this one. Okay. PV equals NRT. I want to find volume, NRT over P. It's just simply a matter of plugging everything in. 3.25 moles times R, 0 0.0821 times temperature. Take 213 plus 273 to get it into Kelvin divided by 1.54 atm. Atmospheres cancels, moles cancels, Kelvin cancels, and volume equals 3.25 times 0 0.0821 times 486 divided by 1.54, and I get 84.2 liters, right? Because liters is the units of volume that are going to kick out of this. Okay, this one's a little harder. All right, so here's how we're going to go. Um, I want temperature. Again, PV equals NRT. So T is going to equal PV over NR. So T will equal pressure. Ah, there's a problem. I can't just plug in 1168 TOR, right? I've got to first convert it to atmospheres. So remember, 1168 TOR, you guys remember the conversion? TOR to atmospheres, one atmosphere is 760 TOR. So 1168 divided by 760 is 1.537 atmospheres. So 1.537 atmospheres times volume, which is 6.49 liters, over 0.781 moles times R, 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin. Okay, there's a weird thing that happens with the units here, but let's deal with that. Um, so notice how we have moles in Kelvin in a denominator in a denominator. In reality, when you have something that's in a denominator of a denominator, right, it's moles can cancel moles because it's in the denominator, but where else would moles be able to cancel? Up in the numerator. It turns out that if you have a fraction in a fraction, the thing that's in the denominator just goes to the other side. So moles Kelvin just goes up here. So I'm going to move moles Kelvin up there so you can look and see the units. Atmospheres cancels, liters cancels, moles cancels, and I get 1.537 times 6.49 divided by 0.781 divided by 0 0.0821. I get 150, how many significant figures should we have? One, we should have three. 156 Kelvin. Or, we could say negative 117 Celsius. Either one. Okay. 
Next one. All right, we want to calculate the pressure. So P equals NRT over V. Okay, easy enough. First things first, moles. Well, I wasn't given moles of O2. What was I given, though? I was given the mass in kilograms. 0.29 kilograms O2. We can convert kilograms of O2 to grams of O2. Right. Then I can convert grams of O2 to moles of O2. Right. And there we go. So 0.26 times 10 to the third divided by 32 gives me 8.125 moles. But really, this number, oops. Really, this number only has two significant figures. So we'll have to keep that in mind as we're putting this up here. So 8.125 moles, but it's only two significant figures, really. R, 0.08, R is always the same number, liters, atmospheres, mole, Kelvin, times temperature. Well, 9 degrees plus 273 is 282 Kelvin, and then volume goes in the denominator, which is 2.3 liters, right? So all I have to do is calculate this out, and 8.125, 82 atmospheres. Seems a little high. This cancels, this cancels, this cancels. Let me make sure I did that right. I guess it is a lot of... Huh. I feel like I did my moles wrong there. I'm just going to calculate. I'm going to pause it. I will fix this here. Okay, it's pretty minor. I actually screwed up my number of moles. I'm sorry. 9.0625 moles... Sorry, the answer should actually be 91 atmospheres. Still very high. Because that's a lot of gas in a very small amount of space. Okay, one more. All right, so we're finding temperature. PV equals NRT. So T is going to equal PV over NR, right? So all I got to do is find the pressure. Well, I've got 735 millimeters of mercury, and if I divide by 760, I get 0.967 atmospheres. Volume is 800 milliliters, which when we convert it is 0.8 liters. N, a sample of carbon dioxide has a... I screwed this whole thing up, I think. I screwed this up. I started doing the wrong problem because I got on a roll. Well, let me back up. Sorry for the mistakes on this one, guys. All right. So this is, I fell into a trap that I was hoping you guys would totally, that I want to help you guys totally avoid. Um, <laughs> I just got in the, the habit of doing, using ideal gas law. But notice what happened there. And this is actually a good example. I looked for moles and I couldn't find any information about moles because this isn't, a, this isn't a question where I'm given three of my variables and asked for another one. Look what's happening. If I read it, if I'd actually read it carefully, a sample of carbon monoxide gas has a volume of some, some volume at a given pressure and a certain temperature. What is the temperature at which this, vo this pressure has this volume? So this is a better one, better two kind of problem, right? We're going from one pressure and volume to another. So we use PV, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2, right? Now, yes, there is a way. I could have actually calculated moles for the first one, and then I could have actually used that to find the temperature for the second one because it's the same moles of gas. But really, this... Um, the combined gas law gets here quicker. So this is where I'd want to use this. So, 
P1 is, and I can use whatever pressure I want, so 735, or I can use whatever units of pressure I want, I mean the same, and 7.311 liters over, what's my temperature? Actually, man, I am really not handling this well today. I have to actually solve first. <laughs> so T2 is what I'm looking for. And T2 is going to equal P2 V2 over T2 times T1 over P1 V1. Okay, that's better. T2 equals, so P2, now here's the thing. I'm going to have two pressures. I've got to make sure they're in the same units. So I can either convert this one to tor millimeters of mercury or convert, convert millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. Either way, I'm going to convert 735 to atmospheres. So P2 is this one, though. So it's 1.68 atmospheres. V2, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm making the choice. It doesn't matter. Again, I've got milliliters for one volume and liters for the other. I'm going to put them both in liters. I could do either one. Now, T1, T1, both temperatures have to be in Kelvin. So I've got to take 45 plus 273. T1 is 318 Kelvin. Why did I put T2 down there? Man, I am really bungling this today. I'm sorry, guys. Um, P1 is going to be 0.967 atmospheres, and volume will be 7.311 uh, liters. Let's make sure, because I'm making a lot of mistakes, make sure I did everything right. So the first situation, um, so I converted this into atmospheres, and that goes down here with P1. V1 here. P2 is the new pressure here. V there and Celsius uh, to Kelvin there. Okay, so I take 1.68 times 0.8 times 318 divided by 0 0.967, 7.311 equals 60.4, 60.5 Kelvin. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop there. So that's, that's my sort of lesson of, you know, don't make the same mistakes I just did. And that's how you can tell the difference between when you need to use the combined gas law and the ideal gas law. So there you go.